It was a camera-shy Princess of Wales who arrived back from America early this morning and walked straight into controversy. A statement from Kensington Palace said that the publicity surrounding the meeting of MPs at the Commons had introduced a political element and made it untenable. This is the second time this week the Princess has run into trouble. On Monday, she was forced to apologise after taking her sons to see a controversial film legally too old for Prince Harry. But this incident's more serious, say critics, because she stepped into the political arena. What is wrong, I suppose, is that she's called the Princess of Wales. She's quasi-royal, and we have had a royal family, which, since the early 19th century, has steered very clear of politics, and a very good thing, too. She, as usual, is crossing frontiers. Diana's support for an international ban on landmines is well known. Her high-profile visit to Angola, where she met blast victims, was criticised by a Conservative defence minister at the time. But this government has been more tolerant of her campaigning. Two weeks ago, she once again spoke out against landmines, insisting her involvement was not political. I am not a political figure. And as I said at the time, and I'd like to reiterate now, my interests are humanitarian. But some MPs thought the princess was being political. Oh, yeah, I'm in favour of banning landmines, but I don't need a member of the royal family to tell me what to do. I don't think it's a matter for, for me to say whether she should or should not attend a particular meeting. It's not unprecedented, and she's clearly following her conscience and in a very important way, which the public clearly supports. It's a cross-party issue, this. Nothing to do with individual parties, and it's quite wrong to make it so, and frankly, I'm disappointed that any member should be so short of media coverage that they've got to descend to this level. Frankly, I'm very dismayed. It is thought Diana has now retreated to Kensington Palace. Currently, she has no private secretary, and some royal watchers believe she needs better guidance as she negotiates the minefields of life as a separated Princess of Wales. Penny Marshall, ITN.